This year you will suffer no loss. Cap TV, RCC Dubai TV channel. She passed in this place this morning. Oh, and worthy is his name. He your name. Oh, my dear. We worship you, Lord. We worship your mind. Can you take it one more time? One more time. Holy, 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 holy. Holy. And you go high. Oh, creation. Now, so, so. 
so yeah yeah every other go na so so yeah yeah every other go na so so yeah yeah every other go na so so yeah yeah every other one na so so yeah yeah every other go na so so yeah yeah Is Jesus shout hallelujah, amen. The most excellent, my Jesus shout hallelujah, amen. What do you say? The most is he excellent in your life? Hey, shout hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, the most is Jesus shout hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Oh, yeah. The most excellency is Jesus. Shout hallelujah, amen. The most excellency is Jesus. Shout hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. God, how great thou art! Immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art! Listen, heaven reigning King, we glorify your name. Immortal God, how great thou art! Somebody 
watching somebody pray. Somebody watching somebody pray. Somebody watching somebody pray. Somebody watching somebody pray. Somebody watching somebody pray. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, celebrate him. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The promise of the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, happy. Your name, hello, happy. Your name, hello, happy. Your name, the promise of the Father, the promise of the Father, hello, happy. Hello, happy. Your name, oh, hello, happy. Your name, hello, happy. Let's lift up our voices with our holy hands lifted up this afternoon. Let's begin to exalt the beauty of holiness. Let's appreciate the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. Lift up your voices and celebrate the King of glory. The God of all flesh. The one who makes the impossible possible. The God who opens and no man shuts. The God who shuts and no man opens. The one who knows the end from the beginning. The God who opposes all things by the word of his power. The same yesterday, today and forever. The author of eternal salvation. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. The God of our flesh. Lift up your voices, brethren, and worship him. Appreciate him. Exalt him. Lift him up on high. Because he alone is worthy. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all adoration. There is no one like unto him. The beauty of holiness. We worship you. We exalt you. We lift you up, Jesus. How great thou art. How glorious is your majesty. You are the God that makes the impossible possible. Thank you for a wonderful time in your presence this afternoon. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. I want us to lift up our voices this afternoon and tell him, Father, empower your word to accomplish your purpose. Even in this meeting, even in our midst, even in our life, empower your word this afternoon to accomplish your purpose. Go ahead, talk to him. Lord, empower your word to accomplish your purpose in our lives, in our midst this afternoon, in the name of Jesus. I want us to lift up our voices, asking the Lord to empower his word, to accomplish his purpose in our lives, in our midst, in this service this afternoon, in the name of Jesus. Lord, empower your word, empower your word, empower your word through the mouth of your servant, to accomplish your purpose in our midst, in our lives, in the life of this service, in the name of Jesus. Empower your word to deliver. Empower your word to bless. Empower your word to accomplish your purpose in the life of this service, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you because you are not a man to lie, neither the son of man to repent. Have you said it? Will you not do it? Have you spoken? Will you not make it good? Lord, empower your word this afternoon to accomplish your purpose in our midst in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause your word to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to bless us, to enlighten us, to counsel us, to lift us up, to
to encourage us in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every form of distraction and manipulations of darkness. We come against them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you lay your hand upon your son, our father in the law. Lord, empower your word in his mouth to accomplish your purpose in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you open the hearts of men to receive of you today. Lord, we pray that you honor the faith of that man, that woman, that boy, that girl. Everyone with expectation this afternoon will not be disappointed. Thank you. Thank you for the rest of this service. Lord, power this service by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you believe that, say better amen. Amen, amen and amen. Let's be seated. Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. He said, worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when we testify is an act of worship. So I'm sure we have some worshipers in the house this morning or this afternoon that led to worship God with your testimony. Anybody like that? God bless you. One. All right. Please come. Praise the Lord. My name is Oloigbe Zio Maduka. I thank God for the salvation of my soul. I'm giving this testimony to the glory of God on behalf of my eldest brother, the firstborn of my mother and my father. Um, last month, as we were coming, my immediate senior sister called me and said, um, there's, I don't want to say problem in the family. Is you are the, about the only person who doesn't know now. Your elder brother is biting his tooth since he returned from a journey, involuntarily, and they took him to the hospital. They don't know what is happening. You know, she couldn't finish the message, and of course, the line went off, her credit finished. I didn't have a credit. Then after some time, I looked at my phone. I saw that a message has popped up. It's my junior brother, the wife. And the Holy Spirit said, don't listen to the message. Just leave it. So I left it. We came. We finished the program. I didn't even remember. It was when we were almost close to our lane. I remembered, and I checked the message, and I had the full message. I just kept praying and thanking God because I know God would take control. And to the glory of God, God to control and today is well. And the second testimony is praise the Lord. Thank you, Nonso, and for everyone. And the other testimony is another brother in our church who was with us in our lane. He finished his contract. He went back to his country. He's not a Nigerian. And last month, about three weeks ago, he just sent a message to me through Messenger and said, Mommy, and there's this girl I wanted to marry. We had met with the family, but as he was praying, the Holy Spirit kept telling him that he should ask the girl to go and do a test. The girl kept refusing it. But the girl kept pressurizing him to have sex with her. He refused. Then, finally, they had even concluded meeting with the family and, mar and the wedding when she now went to do the test. And of course, she is HIV positive. And he just kept telling me, Mommy, I thank God you always tell me that if I follow God, if I listen to God, if I obey the voice of God, I will not go wrong. I thank God that I listened to God. I didn't follow what, you know, the flesh and Satan wanted me to do. I just give God glory on behalf of this, my brother and my... my Amen. Please don't go yet, ma. Uh, we thank God for that testimony. I also have a testimony... Last month, I had an appointment with Daddy at Business Bay. And um, on that particular day, my children had to go to school in the afternoon because they had a program. So I took them to Business Bay with the mind that, okay, after my meeting with Daddy, I'll rush down to the school. But on my way, I was on this uh, Emirate Road. So I just had a prompting to, because I was actually rushing to leave the I mean, first lane to move to the next lane. So I, the, immediately I changed my lane. A car came from behind hit the car that was in front of me. In fact, it was as if he wasn't satisfied. He had to hit the car twice, the first bank, the second one. And everything ra happened right beside me because it just, you know, in about two, three seconds that that thing happened. And I just want to thank God because, of course, God rescued us. And if that thing had happened, number one, the event I was going for, I would have missed it. And, of course, nobody can tell the impact of an accident. So I appreciate God for that. 
Mommy, you would like to please uh, pray for the testify as well. Father, we thank you for the testimonies of our brother and our sister. We pray that our testimony shall be permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. To our brother that you hid, his healing will be permanent in Jesus' mighty name. And to our son in the Lord that you have delivered from the power of death, we pray that yourself, you set to him in Jesus' name. And to the, everyone of us, Lord, we are praying, we are asking, Lord, that I continue to keep our mouth to Lord with testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy and gracious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Good afternoon. Our song um, is a ministration which says, while we are gathered in God's house, he in his own will and way we are trusting that he will do something new for us if you believe that shout hallelujah and that every broken heart is able to heal and we trust that he will minister to our needs his word will come first that will shape our lives i pray as to listen god bless you in jesus name. amen
tells us the shepherd boy David. King Saul was full of jealousy and bitterness against the favored uh, young man David. And then it became an evil door for demon to torment him. So, and it was discovered that whenever David was called in to praise and worship God, Saul felt relieved. Praise God. And then when Saul was getting out of hand, they would send for David. And on two occasions, David escaped <laughs> being pinned to the wall because he threw javelin at him at close range. Every enemy that is angry that God had blessed you or is blessing you or will yet bless you, his javelin will pierce his own heart. Now, the, the lesson we want to board out of this to help us reposition ourselves for divine blessings today is that while as long as David was hailing God, praising him, worshiping him, God was healing Saul. Whenever you heartily, deliberately, consciously Broken-heartedly, hear God in praise, in worship, in adoration. Without saying it, God is healing your life. Praise God. Yes, sir. I read a book many years ago. Ah, I got an inspiration there. I wasn't a popular guy. Some village man like me. He said, the word praise, P-R-A-I-S-E, I think I'm correct. Now he said, remove P, what remains? He said, give God the praise, P. What do you have? He will raise you up. Huh, did you, that's many years ago, about 15 years ago. Very small book tiny thing. God just hid that rema for me there. And it changed so many things in my life. The day God showed me heaven and hell brought daylight. What was I doing? I was praising and worshiping him. Lying on the floor, on the rug by 5 p.m. I saw myself lying down, saw the one, the other, the spirit one, included with the spiritual in the heavens. It's not that he showed it to me, but what was I doing that triggered the heavenly vision? I was worshiping him and praising him. And I was alone. Of course, I was fasting for two weeks with water. So I wasn't singing with an American tone. Oh, Lord. I, no, no, no. I was singing with the little strength I had, like a little child. In fact, with a broken heart, crying it. Body weakened. So I was doing it sincerely, the way he made me, no pretense. And I was alone. So I wasn't speaking for you to like my intonation. I was doing it the real. That's 1998 or 97. That's many years ago. And suddenly it caught me away. Showed me hell. I cried. Showed me the place of mansion. Showed me the mansion of one of my church members. All these things are secondary. Showed me the hand of time. Showed me how long and the little remaining before Jesus comes. 
Show me the name of the trumpet that will be blown that day. The name is Bigo. So the name in heaven, B-E-G-O-U-L-E. -E. Bold and capital letter in the heavens. And then in the middle, it was decorated with a golden ribbon. It has narrow tapering end and a long, wide blowing mouth. Blow it here. It will sound poor there. All these things are secondary. The key that opened the door of these heavenly revelations, I was praising and worshiping him. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord. What do you love to receive glory, honor, and power, and power for the as created all things are for thy place, Jehovah, they are. Yes, Lord, I was created. There is none holy. God. Worship Him. Holy as the Lord, there is none. You bow beside thee, and beside thee, Lord, I die. Beside the Lord, I die. Worship him, holy as God, holy as the Lord, praise not, you bow beside me, and beside the Lord, I die, Holy 
Magnify him. La de Gebo Sante la Gebrono Mojin de la Gebrono Mojin. In Jesus' name, Father, we worship you. Help us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Could you stand, people of God? Please. You want to pray prayer with all your heart. When you pray, you load the, you load the cloud. And in expectation of faith, you draw the blessing. God does not intervene in your affairs until you invite him through scriptural praying. Pay attention. <laughs> it's good to fast. It's medicinal. It's health. I mean, it refines your health. It makes you humble. <laughs> Fasting humbles you. And it weakens you physically, so it humbles you spiritually. It's good to pray. But all those things are, you are the one that needs them, not God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. It's good to praise Him. Before God made you, did you read in the Bible that God was crying that he wasn't being praised enough? It's without him, we can do what? Nothing. Not without us. He cannot exist. Why am I telling you this? Because the ultimate prayer you will pray is to ask God for mercy. Praise God. The Bible says in Psalms, 136 verse 4. He said, To him who alone do it or does great wonders. Why? Because his mercy is endured forever. Never you ask God why again. It's a very arrogant statement. Never you place before God the things you have done that qualifies you for his blessing. You can't do anything to deserve it. We are all condemned criminals. But Jesus took our condemnation and graciously bequeathed to us the righteousness of God. So we were qualified by Jesus to inherit the promises of God. Never to be earned. It is the truth. This is not humility. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why you need to ask God for mercy. And let me tell you the truth, children of God. There is one prayer that God never closes his ear to. That's a cry for mercy. Even when he was hastening at the fullness of time to go and die at Calvary, but the muse was crying in the midst of thousands. He was in a hurry because it was time. But when Bartimaeus cried, he moved. He cried again, he moved. He cried again. He remembered that his mercy endured forever, which means any day, any time you cry for mercy, God will give you a listening ear. Amen? Amen. Maybe that's why many of us have been praying for deliverance or blessing in certain areas, and it's not happening. Probably you've been praying it on the platform of your rights. Yeah, we have rights in God, not rights on our own. So I want you to pray very pointedly. Father, has touching this problem in my life. Show me your mercy. Amen? 
Say Almighty Father. Jehovah El Shaddai. To you who are alone. Great wonders. As touching this area of my life. As touching this need in my life. As touching this problem in my life. Father show me your mercy now. Oh God have mercy on me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. Gracious Father, show us your mercy. Jehovah, show us your mercy. Father, show us your mercy. Li prono bodegebo sataya. Father, show us your mercy. Show us your mercy. Show us your mercy. Father, show us your mercy. Have mercy on me. Gracious Father, have mercy on my wife. Have mercy on my children. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on your children gathered here. Have mercy on the sick, on the bound, on the oppressed. Have mercy on my have mercy on this nation. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on RCCG. Have mercy on daddy and mommy and the boy. Have mercy on their family. Have mercy on me and my household. Have mercy on your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Open your eyes. You want to, Bible says in James 5, that we should pray for one another and we may be healed. Now the healing there is not exclusively physical healing, no. If you read from verse 13, you discover that he had dealt with physical healing. Now, he's talking in a comprehensive sense there. The chance there's an area, physical healing, or anybody in trouble, afflicted, he should pray. Any he is sick, call the elders of the church. They should pray over him, anoint him with oil if he has sinned. The prayer of faith, prayer based on the word of God will heal the sick. Then he says, confess your weaknesses or fault one another. Pray for one another that he may be healed. Now, it's not repeating what he has said. He's talking in, in case there's any area that is not affliction, that is not physical sickness, and uh, maybe your finances or your marriage or emotional. He said, pray for one another that there shall be a corporate release of grace and anointing to touch those areas unto healing. Amen? Amen? So that's what God is saying here. You read it in context, you understand. Hold your hands with one another. Believe God now. Oh, you prayed about it before. Now is your time. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Say, now is my time of deliverance. Now is my time of deliverance. So hold your hands. Yellow, come now. Jehovah El Shaddai, according to your word, that we should pray for one another and we will be healed by you. Father, in any area of the life of my neighbor that he needs healing, Father, have mercy on him. Heal him now in the name of Jesus. Father, heal my brother now. Have mercy on him. Heal him now. He him financially, vocationally, maritally, in every area of his life, visit him with mercy. Visit him, heal him. Show him mercy. Show my brother mercy. Unclub your hands. I bought a book many years ago, written by Robert Tilton. He must have been with the Lord. He's a very serious man. Very serious man of God. In the book, he said, and I read a little bit because ignorance <laughs> has no premium but suffering. And um, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of light and knowledge and revelation. To the extent you've been revealed of the word of God and the riches of the blessings of God in redemption, that's the extent you can exercise faith to take it by force. What you don't know belongs to the thief. Praise God, Lord. And you don't invite the devil to steal your blessing or sit on it. He prowls around looking for someone to steal and destroy. But the devil will not touch you again. Amen. So in that book, he said, he had a vision. Real. And God opened his eyes. He was talking about persisting in warfare. Prayer. The devil would do everything to lie to your mind and discourage you to stop. And hinder the angels ministering the blessing, like in the case of Daniel. He said he saw several parcels 
in the heavens, vision, with tags of people's names on it. This one, big blessing, Pastor Fema. This one, big blessing, Pastor Mrs. Okemwa. This one, the biggest blessing, Pastor Okemwa himself. <laughs> Receive your own in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so he said, they were all hanging there with clear names of people, brethren, probably in his church, on it. He was asking the Lord, why are all these blessings, pastors, good, good pastors, hanging there at levels in the heavens? He said, they are the requests my children made, but they stopped, they, they stopped persisting in taking it. And so the devil deceived them, and the thing is hanging there. And God can't force it down. They have to take it by force, force of faith. It was an eye opener. I said, what? And then I remember the case of Daniel in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel, it was a prayer he normally prays, answer will come. But for 21 days. He finished the 21 days waiting. The answer didn't come. He, on the fourth day of the month of Hidekel, the 22nd day, he continued going to Euphrates Bank to pray and meditate. If we were some of us, including I, who would have said I fasted. We stopped. But when he finished, he still went. As he went the extra mile, trusting God, the angel broke through. Your angel of ministration will break through today. Amen. Say, my angel of ministration will break through today. And there shall be a delivery. In the name of Jesus. So you will thank God for the mercy you received. That's where I'm going. Bible says in Mark 11, 24, it says, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe ye received. NIV put it in past tense, which has little boys like us to understand it better. Believe you received. When you prayed, you have now prayed. Believe you received. And then the word believe is a verb. It's a verb. And it's an active verb or verb in motion. It's not a, it's not a passive verb. It's not a relaxed or sitting verb. It's an active verb. It's a verb that depicts action. So act as if you believe you received the word of God you claim. The first thing you do is to thank him. Raise your hands and thank him for the mercy you receive. Thank you. I receive the mercy of God over my life in the name of Jesus. Over my wife, over the children of God, over, over, over my children. They are excelling in their studies. I receive the mercy of God over this program in the name of Jesus. I receive the mercy of God over every area of my life in the name of... I believe I received it. I receive the mercy of God unto healings, deliverance unto progress, prosperity upon my members in this region in the name of Jesus. I receive the mercy of God over this program. I receive the mercy of God unto marital blessings to my young ones all over this region in the name of Jesus. Mercy of God unto salvation of my family. In Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. We we'll testify before you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. The Lord bless you. Please be seated. We're going to pray some serious prayers today because while I was in my prayer room in the night, the heavens were so thick and unfriendly. So, so unfriendly. And whenever it is that thick and afflictive, you raise your hand to pray. The devil will be afflicting you to bring it down. Uh, you know that there are blessings he wants to, for you not to take by force. But whether the devil oppose us or not, the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. In the name of Jesus. So Matthew 17, I read from 24 to 27. And when they 
were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute, that is, or tax? He said, he said, yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute of their own children or of strangers? Peter said unto him, Of strangers, Jesus said unto him, then are the children free, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them. Go down to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find, don't touch it. Don't worry, don't worry. Thou shalt, don't touch it, don't worry. Thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto thee, unto them for me and thee. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is not a parable. I hope you know. Eh? The Bible is written in in, 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 in contexts. In this context, it's a real story. In some other contexts, it may be a figure of speech, it may be a story, a figurative story, it may be a parable. But this is a real thing, a real story, real event that took place. Jesus was going with the apostles and he had already taught them that they should give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Now, that's a, a statement made in a figure of speech. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. It's not a literal statement. It's a figure of speech in contrast to the story we are reading. Otherwise, you tell me, where is the Caesar? We are going to give tribute now. Or maybe that Caesar should be me. Pray, praise God. <laughs> So now, Jesus had probably grown of age, and Peter probably was the only one who was old enough by the custom of the Jews imposed by the Romish kingdom that was ruling the world then to pay tax. Remember, Jesus said, to pay for me and you, you and I. So probably the other ones were still within the underage bracket of taxation. So it's a real story. Now, there was an embarrassment before them. And if you have seen tax drivers, they are wicked. They are merciless. That's why when Jesus went to the house of the tax collector to eat, they said, ah, does, does the Lord know the kind of person he's eating with? So, both in the Bible times and now, tax merchants are not friendly. That explains why some of you don't like auditors. Eh. Praise the Lord. I like them. I like auditors. Yeah. As a man of God, as a leader, you're a public figure. Your life should be like a book. Everybody should read. Except the things God doesn't want you to share with anybody, including your wife, you keep it secret. But as touching what you do, let you come and audit you anytime. Yes. So I like auditors. Praise the Lord. If you don't like auditors, something is wrong with you. You're doing something wrong. So, task collectors, <laughs> we are not loved at any time. So in the midst of this problem, the Lord proffered a solution. He used the occasion to teach the apostles very vital, dynamic nature of faith. Praise the Lord. So today, 
If you want to write it a topic, write it, When Your Blessing Level Changes, Part 2. Last month, we talked about when your blessing level begins to change. When your blessing level begins to change, Part 2 today. When does your blessing level begin to change? That's the main question. When? Look up. That's correct, but the answer is when you begin to take God at his word. When does your blessing level begin to change? Because every problem situation has a word of the Lord spoken about that. You have to find it and take him at those words. The Bible says in Psalm 107, verse 19 and 20, it says in the affliction, now affliction there, you use in a compound sense. Another translation will tell you, in their troubles, better. They cried unto him, to our Father in heaven. And he sended his word for that particular affliction. And he led them and delivered them from their destruction. To every problem you are having or you will have, there's a word in the word of God that is a direct antidote to that problem the healing word to that sick situation. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says in John 8, verses 31 and 32, John 8, the Lord said, if you continue in my word, searching, searching for your solution, is there? Then are ye my disciples indeed, which means those who don't continue in the word of God are living less than the normal disciple's life. Now, I taught my pastors this morning when we were praying. I said, one of the ways you know that the devil is drawing you into his dark kingdom is when your affinity to the word of God is, is just dwindling, when you don't feel more like reading the word of God or reading Christian books or listening to messages or going to the fellowship, to church, you know that the devil is drawing you. Because people of God, let me use this analogy. Whether you believe it or not, there are two ropes on your waist, the waist of your life. <laughs> one is drawing you towards God. The other one is drawing, the devil is pulling you towards himself. There is no in-between. That's why the Bible says in James 4, it says, draw near, you, draw near to God. And he will do what? You are the one. If you are not drawing near to God, the converse is true. The devil is drawing you near to himself. You know, life on this side of eternity is on two polar ends or extremes. Is either is up or what? Is either heaven? Is either righteous? Is either Jesus? Is either good? I thought when I said is either heaven, you should have told me or purgatory. <laughs> is either success? They used to deceive us when we were in primary school. They say week pass. There's nothing like we pass. Is it that you pass or you fail? Praise the Lord. Then if there is a weak pass, there should be weak fail. Is there anything like that? Life is lived on two polar extremes. Is it that you are drawing near to God or you are drawing near to the devil and farther away from God? May we not draw away from God. In the name of Jesus. So your blessing left where you are now, where you are. There's nobody who doesn't have a problem here. Raise up your hand, I will pray for you. For deliverance from the demon of lying. 
Because the Bible said, from where cometh my help? The word cometh means from where keeps coming my help. Anybody who is on earth that doesn't have a need does not need the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will not leave you helpless, comfortless, like an orphan. He said, I will send the Spirit and he will abide with you forever in time and he will deliver you to me for the marriage supper. And then we will be in their presence forever. That's what he means in John 15, 14, verse 15. He said, 16 and 17. He said, if you love me, obey my commandments. 16. He said, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, helper, counselor, guide, intercessor, advocate, teacher, revealer of mysteries, guide. Then verse 16, he said, who will abide with you from the time you receive me and I give him to you forever. Verse 17, he said, even the spirit of truth, John 14, which the world shall not receive. Because the world walks by the five senses. It's only what they see, smell, perceive, touch, and taste that they can interpret. He said, but you, from the time you receive me, he will live in you. Not only that, he will be with you so that the enemy will raise his standard when the enemy wants to come and destroy you. And we teach you, we open the Bible. He will show you things to come. He will tell you that that sister that is calling you, my dear sister, and uh, is wishing you to lose your job so that you don't fight him, you leave him to God. You know how to relate with him in wisdom. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Once in a while, God will show me somebody who is either something against me or is angry with me. He had done it this year. And when I saw the person, he acted the dream. I laughed. I said, I'm sorry. I didn't offend the fellow, but he was angry with me. So in the night, God opened my eyes and showed me that the fellow was very bitter for no reason. And we were laughing or greeting. Praise the Lord. He said, the spirit will show you things to come. It's not a tell bearer, but for you to help the person, to, to release the person from bitterness. That's, you know, and then to mature, because when you humble yourself to do that, you grow in God. Praise the Lord. So when your blessing level begins to change is when you begin to take God at his word. Now let's see some dynamics of how the money for settling the embarrassment of tax, how the miracle happened. It's a process. Now the one, number one thing you should know about activating the change of your blessing level is that the Christian life is a faith walk. Because it was faith that brought the fish, the, the money out of the mouth of the fish. The Christian walk is a what kind of walk? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we believers we walk by what? Faith. Not by? The word sight there, in that context, is a compound word. We walk by faith, not by the five senses. He used sight because he's talking about walking. You need to see where you're walking to. He used sight there in a representative sense. We walk by faith. The Christian walk is a walk. Another lesson you learn from the word walk is that God doesn't tell you everything at the beginning. No. This is how God does. He either tells you the beginning or he tells you the end or it tells you a point between the end and the beginning. 
so that as you walk with him by faith the light will shine upon your path god doesn't tell you everything otherwise you become omniscient so you don't need faith again that's why in heaven you don't need revelation the only revelation you have in heaven is discovering the unsearchable glorious mystery and majesty and holiness of Jesus, which is deeper than endless pit. That's why eternity will be blissfully interesting. Paul says it's an unsearchable mystery of Christ. Job said in Job 11 verse 7, he said, can you by searching find out God? <laughs> he says, in verse 8, he said, the mystery of God is deeper than the endless pit. So as you're searching it, and I saw you, it gets deeper. So God doesn't tell you everything. He just gives you a word. You have to process and walk and act it. If you do, he will give you another one. You know why many people don't hear God again? The words that God had given them, they had not walked with it. And the Bible says in John 6, verse 12, he said, pick the remnant that remain, that nothing be wasted. God does not waste his power. He doesn't waste his word. So check your life, beloved. What has God told you to do that you have put in the shelf, on the shelf? Like Samuel, he may keep saying it, keep saying it. One way or the other, some people tell your pastor to preach it. He will pinch it for you to know that he's saying it in a different way because he had to call somewhere four times before Eli helped him to know that he's God talking. That's how God, he's so patient, especially to stubborn people like us. But whether God will tell you another thing when you have not processed that one, no. Until Abraham did away with Lot, God never spoke to him, and he was having problems. Genesis 15, God said, Abraham, hmm? leave your house, leave your family, leave your kindred, move out. Did you tell him where he was taking him to? He didn't mention, go and read it here. He didn't mention. It was later I told him. He needed a light to step out. That's a work of faith. That's how God does. People who don't understand this, that's why they go to magicians that use the eye of dog to do charm. Now, I've been in the occult, so I've done occultic things, so I understand some of the magic they're doing. You use the eye of dog to do charm, you see. But not to the children of God, you will see. No, the blood of Jesus is an insurance that no witchcraft can penetrate. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. No wish. When God gives you a word, you must or you should process it. Abraham didn't process what God gave him. <laughs> of course, I've had my own, my own portion of foolishness on not processing, keeping what God told me on the shelf. And I suffered for it until I learned my lesson. I'm still learning. And then the trouble began to grow, to brew, to brew. It became so much that the servant, his men of Abram and the, the son of his father's brother began to quarrel. The son of his brother began to quarrel. Then he called Lord. He said, please, check this Sodom plain, green, flotchy. <laughs> Lord walked by sight. Anything gotten by sight is consumed. If he got it by faith walk, it's durable. So Lord got his own by sight. Abraham followed peace with him and got the rejected one. And God turned the barren land, the desert land, the rocky land 
into a fertile land and consume the one gotten by lust. It was after Abraham settled with him in Genesis 16, the end part of it. Genesis 17, 1, God spoke to Abraham. There were years, that 12 years or so, between the time he told him in 15 to leave. He took the instruction, put it on the shelf. God stopped talking to him until he went and brought it from the shelf, processed it in faith. And God said, Abraham, walk thou before me. I'm God Almighty. Walk thou before me and be thou perfect. That's when God spoke to him again. He learned his lessons. So God, check your life, beloved. Which word had God sent to you? Because to every blessing you desire, he will speak. How he will speak? No, that's his own business. All you have to do is to listen and observe. You can use your pastor. And you accidentally use, you can use a pastor you don't like. <laughs> yeah. Because if I want to, if I want to make some enemies here, I will preach on money. Oh. I will have some unspoken and unexposed enemies here. But I don't want to punch all your joy. One day, if the spirit leads me, I will teach you on that. Ignorance is not an excuse for flouting the law. Ignorance has a premium, and the premium for ignorance is punishment. It's not our portion. Can I hear you say amen? Yeah. It is the knowledge that sets free. Ignorance, the converse is true. Binds. So, which word had God given to you? It can be a dream. It can be a revelation of the word. It can be a trance. It can be by circumstances. God will speak to you, and you know. And when God speaks, he will deliberalize it. He will, he will convict. He said the Spirit will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, because they don't believe in him. If it's the Spirit, you will know that that statement is actually for me. Our Father and the Lord told us there was a need he was praying for. And then he told us, he said he fasted for 21 days. Absolute fasting, that is with water. And he didn't get the word from God, the answer. Because before the physical manifestation, God must speak it. Whether you had it or you perceive it, it's immaterial. He must speak it and it will be so, manifestly. That's how the world was created. That's how God deals with the planet Earth, the domain of man. And God said, and it was so. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 1 verse 3, it says he uphold all things by the word of his power. As a matter of fact, I will give you a secret now. The kingdom of heaven is activated by words. Because you will eventually do what you are saying. So power is activated and released through words. If you keep talking negative things about yourself, it will build up in the realm of the spirit. Words are spirit. John 63. It is the spirit that gives life. NIV. King James. It is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. Natural flesh there means the natural things profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are what? Life. That's why you can say, in the name of Jesus, every demon locking around this house, I rebuke you, get out. And there we go. Whether you saw it or you didn't. Because you have ascended into the realm of words, which are spirit, 
And then you have spoken the word of God, which is spirit, as a weapon of offense against those evil spirits. And he will hid them in the realm of the spirit, provided he spoke it in faith, which is of the spirit man, the heart. Praise God. So before God will manifest the blessing, he would have spoken it. Whether if you had it, you process it. If you don't hear it, you process the promise you ask in prayer. That's the word for you. So the Christian work, number one, is a faith work. Number two, the only substance for faith is what God has said. Not what a prophet told you. I perceive that the person hindering you is your mother-in-law. You know what the devil wants? To go and scatter your family. No. If it's not in line with the word of God, it's a lie. Praise the Lord. Faith comes, keeps coming. Constantly. How? By hearing. Continue. If you stop hearing the word, you, you start, doubt will start coming. Faith will thin away. That's what I'm telling you. I say, <laughs> check how do you love the Bible? How do you love fellowship where you hear the word of God? That will tell you whether faith is still in you or growing or going. There is no in between. Is it that you're drawing near to God or you're drawing near to the devil? Is it that you're walking in the light of God or you're walking toward the darkness of the devil? May we walk in the light of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The only true substance for faith is what God has said. That's number two. There is no faith without the word of God. Whether written or revealed and given. This is the written word of God. A little bit of teaching. But when you brood over it by the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, he will unveil, he will remove the veil covering the written word. And he will give you from it, he will reveal it to you as a person. It becomes a revealed word or a, a faith substance giving word. That's the one you act upon. Don't just read the Bible and say, oh, it is written in Ecclesiastes. Is it Ecclesiastes or Proverbs? Cast your bread upon the water, and after many days you shall find it. You go and buy a bus load of bread. And go and cast in the lagoon of Deira. And you go and sleep. Tomorrow you come, the fishes will wait for you. They will gather it together. And then blow it in the furnace so that you will still be doing. That's nonsense. So many people have made a shipwreck of faith by acting on the written word when the spirit had not revealed it to them. You wait on God, he will give you the word. You will know. You don't worry about whether God is revealing, giving you this word of faith. When the spirit gives it to you, he will witness to your spirit. Romans 8, verse 16. He said, the spirit beareth witness with my spirit. You will know. That's the one you act upon. You said, oh, I believe God. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is done. God said to me. You didn't hear a voice. You didn't hear perception. You heard an unveiling of the word of God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But you must wait on the word. Nothing precious comes out of God except on the platform of fellowship. The Holy Ghost is a spirit of fellowship. Nothing precious. 
comes out of and from God, except you wait on him for it. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength of faith. Never have any other strength. Second Corinthians 13, 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, all these things are delivered on the platform of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. If he abides with you, you walk in his more grace, you walk in more God-like nature, love. And then you can harness more of his blessings. Praise God. Amen. So number one, the Christian walk is a walk of faith. And God doesn't give you all the lights you need. He gives you the word, which entrance of it, give it light, to take one step at a time. If Joseph had all the light to the throne, he had a revelation at 12 years. He became a prime minister at 37 years. Please, those of you that went to school, how many years difference? Eh? 25. He waited on the dream for 25 years. The bigger your dream, the longer you wait. Believing God for the fruit of the womb, this is your season for the Isaac. Amen. No, we're going to lay hands on you and release some anointing for manifestation. If there is any one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Do, don't ever think, God is not a magician. He's a due process God. And the substance of his process is what he has said. No demon can hinder the world from bringing the fruit. God had desired it to be in your life. Can I hear you say amen? amen? So that's number two. There is no faith without the word of God. So you can't have an indifferent attitude with the word of God and walk the walk of faith. Number one, recent walk is a walk of faith. Number two, the substance is the word of God. So you must have an, a passionate affinity to the word of God and to the places of the divisions of the world. Amen? Now, let's conclude it with tracking how Peter walked the walk of faith to the miracle. Look at verse 27. 26. Peter said unto him, of strangers, Jesus said unto him, then are the children free? Now listen. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, the first condition is that your heart should be Free from all encumbrances. Faith can't operate in a heart that is not clean and clear. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, see the hand of God, see the manifestation of God, see the power of God, see the help of God, see the revelations of God, see what God is showing them. Purity of heart. He said, lest we shall offend them. In verse 9, Matthew, 9, Matthew 5, verse 9, he says, The heart that can hear God and believe God and process faith is a heart that has, is devoid of every bitterness, unforgiveness, and encumbrance. Matthew 5, verse 9, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of the blessings of God are not for strangers. They are covenant blessings. They are only for the members of the family that are in covenant or father-children relationship. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Follow peace with all men. There's a way to follow peace even with your enemy. Oh, sure. All men means all men. Friends and enemies alike. Is that not so? Yeah. And holiness, without which no man should see God. See God there does not mean only in the ultimate sense. No, it means here. The blessings of God are righteous blessings, holy blessings. If you don't follow peace with all men, you won't see the blessings manifest to you. That's what God is saying, beloved. So the first condition Jesus said, 
the journey of faith, the work of faith. He said, notwithstanding, lest we shall offend them. Apostle Paul said, have a, a conscience devoid of offense. How do you have it? Speak the truth to one another in love. Those who have worked with me knows me. If you do something wrong, unless it will embarrass you, when I see you, I will tell you, I said, this is corruption. Don't do that. That's what I believe. Speak the truth to one another in love. This truth may offend you, but that's exactly what you did. Don't do it again. You may get uneven with me, but I too, I have not entangled myself with bitterness and backbiting. I will keep my heart pure that I may see the hand of God and see what God is showing me. Praise the Lord. So that's, Jesus is saying, the state of your heart will affect your work of faith. That's why he said, don't you offend them. Then, step number two, he says, go down to the sea of, to the sea. Go where? Everybody say, go. go. Pay attention. You are not in faith if you are not Acting it. Acting faith includes the talking it. And talking will mobilize forces, whether you know it or don't know it, that will make you to behave, behave with what you are saying. You see, sometimes many of us that teach on prayer, pastors, we don't really pray prayer, we teach it. And the members who pray cry to God, wrestle with the devil, they get the result. Because we teach them like signboard. This is the way to Pastor Kemwa's house. Go and deliver the blessing there. There we go. Or go and collect some blessing there. There we go. Collect the blessing. Where has the signboard gone? Eh? That's what the Bible says in James 2. Faith without commensurate actions. Plural. Actions. Or works. You keep saying it. Keep declaring it. In the name of Jesus. Jesus took my infirmities. Carried my diseases. By his stripes I am healed. In the name of Jesus I am healed. Whether you take fancy cup and adore. It's immaterial. If Jesus doesn't heal you. No medicine will work. There's one rich man in Africa. They call him MKO. I can't go too close. He was very stupendously rich. He had a company with the Europeans. He was the MD, he was the chief boss. He had so much money. Then if he visited a university, students will start scamping to, to trample on one another because when they open the portfolio, <laughs> it will bring bundles of mint. He was a giver. He was a bunker giver. But, of course, he died without Christ. So his first wife was sick and dying of a very terminal illness. So he came. He stood by the wife. He said, if only death can take money. He was very rich. He was a giver. He had children all over the place because women were his uh, endemic problem. And when they bring, if you, a new woman bring anyone, you give the person one million naira settlement. So he was a giver. And he acted it. And he was getting richer because faith, if you act it, it grows. Yeah. If you don't act it, it doesn't grow. And Part of the acting, the trigger of faith is to get the word. The next step is to declare the word. The next step is that what you declare will eventually come back to you. You will act it. Part of the reason why you are where you are is the cumulative effect in the realm of the spirit of what you have spoken about yourself. Numbers 14. 28, as you have spoken into my ear, so shall I 
cause every force to work together for it to be unto you according to your word. So learn to talk about where you're going, not where you are. Amen? Amen. You are sick in your body. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't lie. Yo. Don't do like people who, 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 who operate faith upside down. Somebody will touch you. You, you, you don't know what you am saying. You have cold, Okata. And I say, do you have cold? Well, cold is, is disturbing me. But in Jesus' name, it's not my portion. That's correct. You have acknowledged it, but you have rejected it. But some of us tell lies. Somebody will be hungry. You look at the person, you know that this person is famishing. Brother, have you eaten? You look hungry. He said, no, the Lord is good. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you have just lied. How can you be helped? He gave more grace. He gave grace today. Humble. Like you ask me now, Pastor, are you hungry? Listen, I won't waste time before I answer you. I'm very hungry. Because I ate one meal yesterday. And I left my prayer room to 2 o'clock to go and sleep. And we have prayed this morning again. and prayed with my pastors. So the body is open. Waiting for food. So once I finish now, do a meeting, two, 15 minutes, the only anointing remaining is to go and eat and rest. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's a, there's, a, there's a difference between being real and walking in faith. They don't collide. Some people don't know the difference. They present themselves where they will hinder the help of God through somebody or from God by telling you they are talking about faith. The Bible says, is anyone of you among you sick? Is anyone afflicted? It's acknowledgement of the reality. But, this is not my bus stop. My bus stop, I mean, superimposing on this ugly situation is what God said. By his stripes I am healed. The Lord is supplying my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. They that trust in the Lord shall not be put to shame. Nobody will put me to shame in my office. These gates of hell that gang up against me in this place of war, they shall not prevail against me. The word of God says, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. I'm a member of the church. But you have not denied the fact that they are ganging up. But my portion is that they will not prevail against me. Raise your hands to heaven. Say in the name of Jesus. Every gate of hell ganging up against me. Anywhere in the heavens, upon the earth, beneath the earth, you will not prevail against me. I prevail against you by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Dynamics of faith that triggers the change in your blessing level. We talk about, listen, I told somebody, I don't know whether it's in the second church, I appreciate it. I said, <laughs> I say everything God gives you physically is to subdue the earth. The earth is a physical place. Yeah, it was there. I say, for example, you take a plate of rice, put two sticks of meat, chicken, chicken thighs, and then beautiful rice. Oh, sorry, you don't use the word beauty to very what do you, palatable rice. And then you, 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 you dig a spoon there, a scoop, and then you put it on the table. The word of God says, I shall decree it in and it shall be established. Hallelujah. Word of God says, all things are possible to him that believes. Hallelujah. Word of God says, in, 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 with God, all things are possible. Praise God. La toko poso toko poso poto. Rice. I'm hungry. Spoon. Scoop it. Put it in my mouth. Maleke poso toko po. 
I shall declare it and it shall be established. Come on, spoon, I, I command. Is that faith? And you open your mouth for spoon to dig the rice and come and spoon. If you stay too long, you start throwing saliva. And if there's somebody who is very hungry, by the time you are there, you will carry the food and eat. I told my pastors there when we were praying, I said, we have spiritualized foolishness and call it faith. No, faith is simple. Take God at his word. Where the word of God conflicts with reasoning, obey the word. Yeah. Where there's a conflict between the word and reasoning, obey the word. You won't dish. God won't let you. You won't know him. So he will rescue you. I told them about a young boy. If you don't act your faith, it won't produce after what is said. So stop spiritualizing foolishness. Stop thinking that one day God will do what he has given you and I the grace to do. Every physical faculty he has given us is to be used to subdue the earth. Let me close by sharing this testimony. We'll continue. Just take those three points. I had a pastor when I was pastoring in Nigeria. He was a state pastor 1999 to 2001, two, in Lagos. So one of my zonal pastors or area pastors told me of a pastor. He said on Sunday, he comes to church with newspaper, no Bible. I couldn't understand it. I said, we mean it? He said, yes. Then we plan. We will be in his church before he comes. He said, distance. And then the churches were wide. Started with one in three churches, and then they grew to 300 and something. And I broke it into two. I was young, so I had a lot of energy. I was driving, you know. And I'm not the type that I love visitation, so. So early in the morning, I drove out from my house. Far. Say distance. When they are very early for workers meeting, the area pastor drove with me. We came. The pastor came. Big, very big, big man with suit, black suit. He was walking, entering the church. What was in his hands? Newspaper. Now, a pastor that does not go to church with the Bible had not read the Bible in the house. Agreed? What will he use to bless the children of God? Newspaper. <laughs> You'll be telling them stock market. How, you know, uh, Omo, Omo acquired uh, minus one. And, uh, and real estate in Dubai acquired uh, plus two. And then, uh, my boy, Damish, you know the terminology, I don't know. They are money people. That's the thing. He had failed to use the things, the resources God had given him to harness and subdue life here. He's walking by faith without the substance. Just like some people. If I want to wake you up from sleep now, before we pray, I will pray that every enemy of your prosperity should die. Look at that. I have not even prayed it, so I'm saying amen. <laughs> I've not even prayed it, so I'm saying amen. The question is, are you diligent? What you find your hand doing, are you doing it with all your might? You hear me say I'm hungry. It's not that as if I'm sleeping with my wife. No, I burnt myself in my prayer room. <laughs> It was, they put, I was so tired, they put meal for me when I came back from the second preaching. And I came back from Africa. I laid down after 5 a.m. because I, I came in from the airport. It was in the plane I prepared my message. And I'm not growing younger, whether you believe it or not. For those of you who are growing younger every day, no, 
every tickle of the second, you are growing old and getting closer to your grave. You may not like me for this, but that's the truth, by the way. So what God has given you the grace and the physical resources to do, you must do it. Faith must be acted. You want to prosper, you must be diligent. You must lay your hand on something. Another pastor, on Sunday morning, he will, he will take the Bible. Lazy, lazy man. He won't read, though. he will sleep all night. In the morning, he will take the Bible. Well, said the Lord, teach my hand to battle. Father, show me where I will preach today. Guide me. You open the Bible. Ah, Jeremiah chapter 5. <laughs> Abracadabra, my brother. <laughs> That's not faith. That's spiritualizing foolishness. God would have thrown Jesus, the Lord, down at 33 years. Or Jesus would have hung in the sky there and said, I hereby declare that I have redeemed all men. No. He was conceived, but by the power of God, no man. So the blood could be pure. To atone for the impure lives and blood of all men. It takes a pure, it takes... It is a cleanser to clean a thing, not a dirty rag. It was the mother face problem. They ran for their lives. He partook of flesh and blood so that he might destroy him that has the power of death, which is the devil. All those processes he went is to show us that he has identified with us. This is how we live on earth here. They wanted to kill him, he ran away. Which means, where there is danger, run for your life. You had that, like in Africa, I'm robbers. They, they operate here and there. I'm robbers, I put gun on my head here. My wife was there the night they put it on my neck with military uniform. Say, so we'll shoot you. All the six times or so, I was going for church work. I'm not a thief, I'm a titer. I'm a first fruiter. I don't abuse my office finally. Before God, I speak. I don't need a proof. So why did God wants to show me that except he kills you, you won't die. And anybody who wishes you to die, if that person does repent, he will die. And you will live to declare the works of God. So but in all these things, God made it clear to me, boy, don't be afraid. Nobody will kill you. And I'm here six, seven times. Not keep... The Lord will keep you. Amen. The Lord will keep us. Amen. So we want to pray now. We want to minister to you if you're sick in your body. We want to rebuke the sickness by the word of God in the name of the Lord. It will live. Amen. If you're believing God for the fruit of the womb, we want to release the grace of God on behalf of God upon you. Your body will catch fire of conception. Stand on your feet. I don't know, but in, perchance there is somebody who is not born again. Because the blessings of God are covenant blessings. They are for those who have relationship with God. And the relationship that entitles you to the covenant of the blessings of God is called a salvation relationship. The Bible says... Whoso shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So is there anybody here who has not been saved? You are not giving your life to Christ. You are not born again. You attend church, but you are not born again. Don't miss today. It's a special day. Raise up your hand. I will pray with you. I will lead you to Christ. If you, if you have not given your life to Christ, because you must belong to the family before the will of the Father for his children will come to you. Anybody like that? Nobody. Lift your hand. Say, Father, thank you for your word. I receive your word. I receive your word. The entrance of your word gives me life. I receive your word. Receive it. Receive it. Receive the word of God. Say, I receive the light of the word. 
Every word of life I've had today, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it for healing. You send your word and he healed me. I receive your word for my I receive it. I receive it. I receive your word. I receive your healing. Father, I receive your word. I receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah, I want to pray one prayer and then I will minister to those who need ministration. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 2.10, it says, The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. As those who said the purpose of God Purpose that God planned for your life will not come to pass. They are sworn enemies of God. They are putting, they are dead that God said, don't put your hand into the apple of my eyes. Amen? There is no believer that is in that category. Believer can be carnal. So you don't pray that a believer should die. Believers are not your sworn enemies. They will be carnal. Behaving according to the ignorance in them. No. You can pray that God should disgrace them in their craftiness. But there are sworn enemies. In the Old Testament, they are a type of the Amalekites. Exodus 17, 11 to 16. They will lay the Israelites say, you are not going to the promised land. We are going to slaughter you. They are the tunneled or hidden enemies. That's, they are, these are the people God said he swore that as he lives he will wipe them out. You remember in Son Samuel he told King Saul go and kill Agag and uh, the other people. He went and out of greed he went and spread them. So you want to deal with every sworn enemy of your destiny. He said the adversaries of the Lord the adversaries of the Lord they say God whatever to do in his life, nonsense. I will not let you do it. Then you collide them with God. They are the people God says you will break to pieces. They are not many, but once in a while, those whose cup are full and ready for judgment will make themselves sworn enemies. Amen? Their portion is eternal judgment in the name of Jesus. So he said, The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. He said, Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. Then, when he removes them out of the way, then the B part of it, he said, and he will exalt the heart of his servants, those of us who are subject to him. Raise your hands and say, Almighty Father, every adversary of your purpose for my life, every sworn enemy of your purpose for my life, every enemy of your destiny for me, According to your word, break them in pieces. Thunder upon them in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, break them in pieces. Thunder upon them. Thunder upon them. Thunder upon them. Every sworn enemy of your purpose for my life. Father, thunder upon them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Break them in pieces. Gracious Father, break them in pieces. Gracious Father, break them in pieces. Thunder upon the adversaries of my health, my ministry, my prayer life, my marriage, my children's schooling, my finances, the region. Thunder upon them. Thunder upon the adversaries of RCCG, the enemies of our Father and the Lord and the family. Thunder upon them. The enemies of my pastors. Thunder upon them. Break them in pieces. Enemies of my members in their thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. The last one. You will cry to God and say, Father, in every area of my life, be specific. I will teach you about the specificity of faith in the future. You see? Say, every, Father, in every area of my life, in my health, in my finances, be specific, be expectant, be targetful. Father, exalt your horn. Amen? Amen? Say, Almighty Father, Almighty Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah El Shaddai. 
according to your word in every area of my life and that of my family members exalt your horn in the name of jesus father exalt your heart ladegebo sataya Exalt your heart. Exalt your heart. Ekeseteki kosotoki. Dagabo sotoki kota. Intalegebo sotoki kota. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise your hands and thank him, Father. Thank you. Say, Father, I receive, I receive the things I ask. Thank you. Thank you for exalting your heart. In my strength, in my body, in my health, in my soul, in my spirit, my finances, in the life of my pastors, the members, Daddy, Mommy, Adeboye, the redeemed presence of God, the church in this region. Thank you for exalting your heart. Thank you for blessing this land where we are planted, the UAE. Thank you for peace. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for blessings. Thank you for mercy. We receive the blessing. I receive the blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. If there's anybody believing God for the fruit of the womb, I want to pray for you. And if you're sick in your body, come out. The ministers will surround you and release. We've acquired some anointing to minister to you. Come, we will pray for you now. Sickness is not just because you sin. You may abuse your body like I've abused my body so well, I want to go and eat and rest it, even if I don't sleep. Yeah. We are not robber. Some fall sick because they eat wrongly. Some fall sick because of stress, like, <laughs> I, need, I need to rest. I'm well, but I need to rest my body. I've overworked it. Praise God. Yeah. Our Father and the Lord taught us about fasting a few years ago in Solemn Assembly. He said, if you're weak, don't fast. He said, fasting weakens you. Huh. That's a deep one. I said, somebody in his spiritual level. But that's the simple truth. Somebody can out of foolishness. He said, hey, it's fasting. I don't want to break this fasting. Oh, okay, you continue when you get to heaven. <laughs> fasting weakens you. If you are weak, recover first, then continue. Praise the Lord. So, that's it. Some of you may be portraying money too much that you don't even have time to eat good food and rest. Your body will break down. You didn't commit sin, but you have not managed your body well. Some may be holding bitterness or unforgiveness. Ah, it will be withering your bone. Church, stretch your hands toward them and say, Almighty Father, Whatsoever that has made the enemy to afflict them, whether because of their own carelessness or abuse or any sin, Father, have mercy. Let the blood of Jesus speak mercy on their behalf. Pray, brethren, in the name of Jesus. Let take a posoko. Pastors, come and lay hands on them. Begin to release the anointing for recovery. Lay hands on them. Command the sickness to go, Jesus. Father, have mercy on them. Congregation, keep praying. Keep asking. God. Command me in the name of Jesus. I command you to be healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Believe it. We are acting the word of God. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Command the sickness to die and get out. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. I release. The grace of God, the anointing of God for healing. I command the healing of God upon you. I release the healing of God upon you. Holy Ghost, thank you. Be healed in your body. Every foul spirit behind the sickness, I command you, get out. Every spirit of infirmity, loose them down and go. I receive health and strength to everybody here. In the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive the healing of God. Receive the healing of God. Receive it. Receive it. Receive the healing of God. In the name of Jesus. I release you now. I command you to be healed. 
Lenda ke bozo dogi kadaya. Mede ke bo santaya. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Receive the healing of God. Be healed. So, God has healed you. As the pastors lay hands on you, what they did is to activate your faith. They acted what they believed. So you should act what they acted upon, the word of God, that they will lay hands on you. And together we are to anoint us with might and power so that we can minister healing to you. If you believe it, all of you will recover. How do you show that you believe it? You dare not say you have the sickness again because have is a possessive verb. And what you have, nobody will collect it from you. It's your own. Praise the Lord. Then you keep thanking God for where you are going, the full recovery. And then the people will still pinch you with the symptoms. Say, in the name of Jesus, Jesus has carried this. And I don't need to carry what he has carried. He has carried it and is no more my own. By his stripes, I'm healed. I am recovering. Father, thank you. Satan, I rebuke you. You can't put this on me. And you discover that like they that are dreaming, you'll get better. And you'll be whole. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Give God praise. Thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can go back to your seat. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Okay. Pastors, join me and church, stand up and stretch your hand. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pastor, lay hands on all of them. Maleke proso nida nida nida. Let's take it by force. Pray in the name of Jesus. Release Release the anointing. Release the anointing for conception. Maleke prosotakala pruno mojite ke posataya. Bring the Holy Ghost, release the anointing, take it by force. Yarege bola, worship, worship. Ke ta ke se pokosan. Nerege bo si pruno. Take it We release the anointing for fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus. Marege bo sataya. We release the anointing. Lay hands, keep laying, release the anointing. Keep it down and release the anointing. We release the anointing for fruitfulness. We release the anointing for fruitfulness. We release the anointing for fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. We release the anointing. We release the anointing of God for fruitfulness. We release the anointing of God for fruitfulness. We release the anointing of God for fruitfulness upon you. Upon your marriage, we release the anointing of God. Holy Ghost, we kingdom. I release the anointing of God for fruitfulness. I release it more, I release it more for you. More anointing. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Naregebo Satayaka. In Jesus' name we pray. The word of God says, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be losing heaven. On behalf of this body of Christ. I command that whatever power that is hindering your fruitfulness unto childbearing, that power be broken now in the name of Jesus. Be bound and broken in the name of Jesus. I lose the grace and the anointing of God upon you on behalf of the church of God here. Be fruitful, conceive, bring forth. Today marks the termination of barrenness in your life, in your marriages. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Give God thanks, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Raise your hands to heaven. Father, these hands are raised up to you. Lord, I ask that 
to every one of them, whatever is a need in their life, meet it in Jesus' name. As their hands are raised up as a child, raising his hands to his parent to carry him or her, my father carried them. Amen. Carried them to places of safety, Amen. places of favor, Amen. places of blessing. Amen. Lay your hands on them. Amen. Let them be different from the ordinary people. Amen. Wherever they go, let your light shine before them. Amen. My father, these ones are marked with the blood of Jesus. No evil nor sickness will afflict them. I bless you as a father will bless his children. You are blessed. Go, it is well with you. In the name of Jesus. This year you will suffer no loss. Gap TV, RCC Dubai TV channel.